an interesting way of working for us at the moment. Yeah, we're having to get used to the technology. Um, luckily, we are living in the world that we are living in nowadays, and we've got the ability to uh, communicate and still operate and still work um, as much as we can. So um, we are fortunate that we have the technology these days that uh, is, we can still operate quite normally, at, albeit at home in the comfort of our own home. Um, the only difficulty, I think, is you've not got access to your fellow cabin and your photocopier and things like that that you would normally need. So, um, other than taking that in the car the other day there um, and bringing it up the road, I can't see it going down too well at home bringing a photocopier into the front door. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Everyone's working from home, so everyone's still accessible and contactable and de dealing with emails and any way that people are contacting us. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the phone phone lines are being diverted as well to mobiles too, so that we have a bit of a continuation a continuation of service. I've had a couple of emails in the last you know twelve to fourteen hours about people trying to renew season tickets, for example, at a slight issue online, and we've uh, managed to resolve that by at least we're getting the contact, um, and we're being able to help people out where, where we possibly can. There's was a question coming in about season tickets as the finance plan. But basically, my, uh, email Martin tickets at shrewsburytown.co.uk. Hey, no, it's tickets at shrewsburytown.co.uk. That's what I said. You said Martin? Yeah, I said Martin. Oh, tickets at shrewsburytown.co.uk. Thank okay, you, Martin. Tickets at shrewsburytown.co.uk. All emails are getting picked up. Um, we're trying to resolve anything that comes in, any queries, anything at all. You know, all staff have their, their emails usually on their phone or you know, back home or connected to their home PCs or whatever. So uh, we're trying to make it accept as accessible as possible for everybody and also for us as a staff to continue to communicate with each other in the best possible way. We may not all be in the office together, but you know, obviously the technology we've got now uh, between, you know, even whether it's your phone, your WhatsApp, messaging, emails and Skype, etc., etc. There are so many ways of communicating nowadays, uh, whether that's video or audio. Yes, as well, the Metro season tickets still on sale, still good savings on the early bird. Yeah, yeah, obviously it's something that we're looking at just now. The early bird goes on to the middle of April. We're still selling them, to be honest with you, and I have tried to put a clear message out. We totally understand that some people might not be in a position to do anything because of what's going on in the world just now, and we totally understand that. But all we're saying is that because we have very or very few income streams just now, if there are people that are able to renew and they are, are intending renewing, if they can renew, and obviously there had been a number of them have, have taken that up and, and tried to help the club. Um, obviously in the time where we've not got the income streams that we would normally have at this time of year. I guess as well the EFL are in touch all day basically by whatsapp and whatever else and a few sort of video conferences between all the uh, clubs we had a, yeah we had a league one um, microsoft teams uh, conversation yesterday at four o'clock which went to about six o'clock which involved 43 participants from the 23 clubs in league one plus rick parry the chair of the efl and obviously our board representatives jez moxie and steve Kerwood, who represent league one um, uh, Rick gave us an update on discussions with the PFA, with the Premier League, with the broadcasters, etc, etc. And even things like the funding for the retention scheme. Whilst some of these things are still a bit in the offing because it's only just been announced less than a week ago. Um, they're trying to get as much information as they can. They're trying to have discussions with various stakeholders to ensure you know, the viability of, of the clubs going forward. I know everybody then got a chance to ask questions. Uh, obviously, being Shrewsbury Town, we were one of the last of the league to get asked any questions. A lot of the questions were already covered, but we all had our, our chance to, to speak and ask questions. And I felt it was a really good way of everybody getting together, everybody talking. Um, and there was also a WhatsApp group set up, set up yesterday between League One and League Two chairman and chief execs. Um, but unfortunately, that's now got 64 people, so I don't know why it's been going all morning. So you're trying to do some work and your WhatsApp's going all the time with people asking various questions. And a lot of the questions that the League Two clubs are asking are ones that we got some clarification on yesterday on an update, if nothing else, uh, from, from Rick Parry. So, um, you know, there, there are obviously a lot of things going ongoing at the moment with the uh, EFL and their staff. Um, and you know, it's just a constantly changing world we're living in just now, whether that's 
you, know, you just need to see it from the government and things that are being announced all the time, all the changes, all the updates. Um, the most important thing at the end of the day is everybody to stay safe. Yeah, but exactly. when you speak, yeah. when you listen to the clubs yesterday, though, and a lot of them are, you know, obviously in a really worse, far worse financial state than we are. You know, with our reserves, whereas I keep saying we don't want to dip into them, but we can if we need to. Um, a lot of clubs are not, don't have that reserve that, that we have, so we're in a, a far more fortunate position than you know ninety nine percent of clubs, um, which is good for us as a football club, and we should, we should all be proud of that. Um, whether it's staff, um, supporters, or everybody involved in the sponsors involved in a football club, that we should be very proud that Shrewsbury Town's got one of the best finances and can deal with the situation. When you hear the stories from other clubs trying to go to you know, and get loans, ones that perhaps don't have any debt like us, but obviously don't have necessarily the reserves to be able to absorb it. Uh, going to the bank trying to get loans. You know, a few clubs were saying that they're having real problems getting any loans because of the um, the financial situation just now, um, and certainly football is not necessarily one the track record. It's got some parts, you know, to be going for the banks to be throwing money at it. So there was quite a bit of discussion yesterday, um, all about players necessarily, about the, the furlough scheme, um, potential for training and restarting the season. I think everybody's keen to restart the season if and when it is safe to do so. Um, when that happens is basically up in the air just now because. We wouldn't obviously do any more games until such times as we know it's it's safe to do that. Because even you know playing behind closed doors, which I know is muted as one of the options, you're still going to bring probably a hundred people. By the time you take you know twenty players and each team's forty, two sets of backroom team that takes you up to sixty. Then the referees and various personnel would be required to operate a football match. And then what do they do afterwards? Because you never know if some are infected, one's infected, then it could potentially spread through other teams and then um, make things worse. So, you know, football needs to restart when, when it's when the government and the advice from the health professionals is that it is ready to restart. I guess that's the point though, isn't it? Because we look at China and South Korea and other places, there's something that the government can look at to see it trends and see how the whole thing pans out. Yeah, I think well, they're, they're following everything very, very closely. And to be fair to the EFL, they've got a really close link with the government. They're trying to get information as quickly as they can. The issue sometimes just because, the you know, for example, the furloughing scheme, furloughing scheme was announced last week and, you know, you're then looking for people to make up online portals to be able to facilitate that. And there must be getting inquiries all the time from not just football clubs, but every business in the land trying to find out how the scheme works, how you can get the money back and even just even get the rules on it as well. So, you know, there's a lot to consider. I think football is a difficult position we're, we're in. Um, because of the kind of hand to mouth that a lot of football clubs operate on, we just have to sit tight at the moment and just hopefully you know things get better in the country, um, and then we can get the advice that you know we are ready to potentially restart a league whenever that might be. And you know you're looking at it just now, thinking you know we're still talking about a few weeks away from hitting its peak, and the kind of assumption was made that. Yeah, insinuation was that we wouldn't be restarting until such times we're past the peak and well down the curve on, on the on the downward curve so that it was safe but obviously playing games again no matter whether it's closed doors or, or whether it's with a crowd will certainly not be taking place until the government agree to that at the same time. Yes as well as a football club we've said before it's very much the heart of the community just a note day with Jamie about what they're doing the academy are reaching out to their players through um, Twitter and the little videos, so we're trying to sort of keep everyone sort of active, up to date, engaged really. Yeah, no, I, th I think you know what, what the guys and what Jamie and his team are doing in the community is fantastic. You know, just constantly doing different things to try and help people, help parents as well. And same with what David's doing in the academy, all his coaches and all the players doing it, even the first team players getting involved with the skills challenge. You know, it might take a couple of hours to go and do 50 keep you uppies, but it's keeping young children fit, it's giving the parents a bit of a break from the monotony. Um, so I think, you know, certainly the At Shrews Acad Academy Twitter is worth, worth keeping an eye on. It's quite funny to see all the kids in the academy and other siblings and other people trying to join in. 
Um, even Adam Green was doing 50 KP up his other day in BBC Radio Shropshire, which was nice to see that he was supporting it too. But again, this, the stuff that we're trying to do with the, should Jamie's trying to do with the, the community side of things and just come up with creative ideas, you know, remain financial at doing French lessons, you know. And there are other clubs in the country that are offering that kind of facility and it's great to see the players buy into all this too, that they're willing to support it. You know, we, we really are amongst them, you know, regard ourselves as a community and family and orientated clubs. So it's at times like this we really do want to show and prove to everybody how much how much we want to do and how much we want to get involved by helping the local community get through this um, in any way we can possibly can. Before about the NHS and the local council and talking to them about how we can help, the doors are open. So I guess there's, there's still conversations ongoing. Yeah, I mean, the NHS and we've, you know, we've approached the NHS, we've been in discussions with the NHS and the council about um, any ways we can potentially offer help. Um, they've been back in touch even yesterday, the NHS, just about one potential, one that they could p perhaps need some help with. So there are ongoing discussions about that just now, whether, you know, whether it works for them and if, if we can help in any way, whether that's facilities, programmes, anything at all to uh, try and help fight this virus, which is inflicting our whole country and the whole world just now. Um, we are, we are, you know, we're open arms to anything that we can possibly do to, to help. I guess the our final message is uh, to stay home, stay in touch and look after each other. Yeah, it's very much so. It's, it's such a dangerous thing, you know, that the virus going about and you don't know the symptoms for 14 days. So I think, to be fair, putting out a strong message about everybody staying at home, whilst it's, it's frustrating at times, um, hopefully out there people can still operate, still work and do what they can um, and a lot of people should have nice gardens by the end of all this as well at the same time.